Good morning. When we left off for the third time now, Gib is undoing, or I guess for the second time now, Gib is undoing what happens with the truck. And he decided to key in 15 minutes on the enter. The world jerked and I found myself standing in line again. I'd made the mistake of keeping my eyes open and I was dizzy. I bumped into Ash. Whoa, he said, what's wrong? I blinked at him. His face glowed bright with eagerness and excitement. He was, after all, looking forward to a thrilling ride he'd never tried before. Nothing, I just, I just, I figured I might as well tell him right away. Ash, I can't go on this ride. What? He looked as if I just told him I was growing a tail. What's the matter? I rubbed my sleeve hastily across my eyes, still wet with tears. How much more embarrassing could life get? Nothing, I said for the second time. I can't go on this ride, that's all. You can go by yourself if you want. It's okay. Are you out of your mind? We've been planning this for weeks. You have to go. It won't be any fun without you. I shook my head. Trust me, if I go, somebody's going to get hit by a truck. For a minute, he didn't believe me. I could see his eyes moving as he tried to figure out what was going on, wondering if I'd turned chicken and was just using a lame excuse to get out of the ride. But at this point in the last version of time, he'd known about the Unner. He'd even used it himself. He knew about Roxy and the accident that hadn't happened yet. I watched as he decided to trust me. You sure, he said? I nodded. His shoulders and the corners of his mouth drooped. He wasn't very good at hiding disappointment. Can we try again later, he asked, as he turned around to begin working his way out of the line. Maybe, I said, following him. If there's a miracle, I thought. It was a tight squeeze. The line behind us was longer than it had been before, and there were a lot of people packed between the two metal guide rails leading up to the ride. It was hard for them to make space for us. I accidentally stepped on a girl's foot. She shrieked. You'd have thought I was wearing jack boots with spikes in the soles. How much could an ordinary pair of canvas high tops hurt? Then I saw her look up and bat her eyes at the guy she was with. He was big and his teacher t-shirt bulged with muscles. But I was worried about Rainy and Roxy. And somehow those facts didn't register right away. What did register was that she was faking to make it look as if I'd hurt her more than I really had. <clears throat> I've seen girls try to start fights between boys a number of times, and I have to say I just don't get it. What's the point? It makes me really mad, and this time was no exception. I said the first thing that came into my head. Cripes, don't have a cow. The boyfriend turned toward me, his chunky face twisted in an angry scowl. Watch it, shrimp, he said, and he grabbed the front of my jacket, jerking me right off my feet. People around us grumbled and squealed, upset at being jostled. Ash turned around and said, hey, leave my friend alone. You want me to leave him alone? Okay. The guy sneered and threw me over the railing like a sack of potatoes. I somersaulted across the dirt and lay there gasping. All the wind knocked out of me. The honor, I heard Ash cry. Then there was another sound, the crunch of breaking plastic. I sat up just in time to see the unner spinning beneath the feet of people who didn't even notice they were kicking it. Pieces sprang in all directions. Ash squeezed under the railing and scurried into the crowd on his hands and knees like a mad mouse. He lunged toward what was left of the device, covering it with his body. Somebody stumbled over him. I heard him grunt. He got to his feet, shook himself off, and hurried over to help me up. He was still watching the ground in a stunned way as stray bits of the honor continued to ricochet from one person's feet to another. I want you to stop and think about what this means now. I spit out dirt as Ash handed me the mass of unidentifiable parts and dangling connectures. This can't be happening, I said, staring at it, unwilling to believe my own eyes. Sorry, said Ash, I tried to get it, I really did. He looked almost as desperate as I felt. What now? Now, I said. I felt half dead inside, almost the way I had on our Roxyless house after the first accident. It was hard to think or even feel. Nothing seemed real anymore. But I guess some part of me knew what was going on. 
and that part took over, urging me forward into my last chance of saving the world as I knew it. I looked across the midway toward the pony ride, and there, just as before, stood Roxy and Rainy, hand in hand. In my dazed state, they seemed as joyful and radiant as a pair of angels outlined in carnival lights. I'd rather have croaked right there than watch anything bad happen to either one of them. They walked toward the booth where the blonde woman hawked her candy apples. Can I please, please have one, said Roxy. I love candy apples. Sure, said Rainy, smiling. She stroked Roxy's hair. I walked over to them, trying a smile of my own. Pretty hard to eat those without front teeth, I said. Lorraine looked up. Oh, Gib, Ash, hi, she said. She started to grin, but stopped halfway, probably remembering how rude I'd been when I left the house. Roxy stuck her tongue out at me and said, doesn't matter, I can so eat it without my front teeth. Then she looked at me hard. Ew, what happened to you? I looked down at myself. I was filthy. Pale dust caked my shirt and jacket and unidentifiable carnival, carnival junk was stuck to my jeans. I didn't even want to know what my face looked like. The tip of my nose felt funny and when I reached up to touch it, my finger came away red. I'd scraped it in exactly the same place as I had when I tripped in the woods an eternity ago. Gosh, Gib, what did happen to you? You look like you've been in a fight, said Lorraine. Worry lines dented her forehead and I thought, maybe she doesn't hate me. Deep, not deeply anyway. I smiled. Oh, I'm okay. I mean, it wasn't exactly a fight, just kind of. No big deal. I looked down at Roxy. How about that candy apple, I said. I took her hand, the one Lorraine wasn't holding. I thought Roxy might object, but instead she was happy. Yay, you guys can swing me, she said, lifting her feet off the ground, practically tearing her arms out of their sockets. Rainy and I rolled our eyes at each other at the exact same time, then laughed as we swung Roxy toward the snack booth. From the corner of my eye, I saw the mangy stray dog running our way. I thought maybe I could distract Roxy, so I said, Hey, Rox, want to see a trick I learned? She put her feet back on the ground and looked at me with suspicion. What kind of trick? Is it a mean one? Would I play a mean trick on you? She frowned, unconvinced, and I knew why. Of course I would play a mean trick on her. I certainly done it enough times in the past. But now the only thing that mattered was keeping her distracted, whether she believed me or not. So I tried frantically to think up a trick, any trick. I spotted a box of paper-wrapped soda straws on the counter beside the mustard. Watch this. I tugged her toward the counter so I could reach a straw with one hand while holding on to her with the other. I bit the end off the paper and began to inch it down the straw, thinking I'd show her how to blow into one end and shoot the paper off the other like an arrow. It didn't have to be a great trick after all, just a distracting one. Two candy apples, please, said Lorraine and she dropped Roxy's hand so she could open her coin purse. But I still had the other end, hand, and I tightened my grip just for good measure. Hey, that hurts, Roxy yelled. Instinctively, I relaxed my hand a little. Roxy sensed it and slipped free, glaring at me and rubbing her wrist as if I'd mortally wounded her. I dropped the straw and reached to grab hold of her, but she dodged. She was fast. It was like trying to catch a bird. The dog ran right between us, panting and wild-eyed, his fur brushing our shins. Now that I saw up close, he looked lost and confused, and I was glad I'd stopped myself from hitting him with rocks in front of our house. Oh, poor doggy, you need help, cried Roxy, grinning like a maniac. Before I could stop her, she was gone. And I am going to stop there. <laughs> we'll have to see what happens on Monday. <laughs>